issue of land, forest and water are not just the issue of Adivasis, fisher folks, Dalits and marginalized communities. These issues, if we don't address it properly, are going to affect the middle class and also people living in the cities. Now suppose the violence will grow because we are not acting, we are not helping the poor people to have control over land and resources. As a result, violence is growing. So if this violence will spread, nobody is going to be safe because once people use violence and they start making a survival, a, a, a life by using violence, they will use violence not only in tribal areas, but they can use violence everywhere. So growing violence, the expansion of violence, spreading of violence in India is not only a problem of the Adivasis and the marginalized communities, this is going to be a problem of the city people in the coming years. So I want people to wake up to this reality. In the same way, if all the resources are taken by the national multinational companies to make profit, and the rural population get pushed out of rural areas into cities, where are they going to live? The cities in which we live today are already very difficult cities and very dirty. The plastic is piling up, dirt is piling up, the gutters are filled with water, they are not flowing anymore. Immediately after one rain, we can see how difficult it is for people to, to walk through the roads of our cities and towns. So this is time for people to wake up and support this social movement. It's your responsibility to stand up and say, look, the resources should be given to the, to the poor people so that they can make a living. The river sources should be given to, to the fisher folks who can do fishing and make a living. The land should be given to the landless. The, the forest should be in the hands of Adivasis. In a country like India, about 75 to 80 people are 80 percent people are still living in rural areas, and only 20 percent people are living in cities and uh, and towns. Now this trend is going to change drastically if people are forced to travel from migrate from villages to cities. So this is time for the middle class to wake up, stand up, and say this is not the right trend. If a small country like Bhutan can say, happiness is our index to measure development, why is that a country like India is failing? Uh, one way people can help is to write a letter to the Prime Minister. See, the Prime Minister and Planning Commission should be motivated. The decision makers need to be motivated to look at the development model as it is today and the misery that, is, that it is creating and asking them to change this direction. Unless there will be large public opinion, this is not going to change. Only poor people shouting against this development model is not going to help. Only social activists speaking against this development model is not going to help. The media should speak against it. The middle class people should speak against it. The intellectuals of this country should speak against it. The journalists can write. During this one year yatra, I have seen that more and more journalists are finding this subject interesting and they are finding that this subject is very relevant in today's India and they have started writing. So a lot more people need to write, lead articles. Journalists should also visit the rural areas and, and find for themselves how miserable the condition has become for millions of our people. So land, forest, water, the livelihood resources of the poor people should become the agenda of debate in intellectual forums. I think young people have a very important role to play. They can find time to go to villages, to understand the problems of the poor people. What is happening to the Adivasis of my country? What is happening to the fisher folks of my country? What is happening to the nomads of my country? What is happening to the Dalits and marginalized communities of my country? What is happening to the farmers of my country? So if we are all interested in good food, we should also respect people who are producing food. So the farmers who are toiling day and night, to give us good vegetables, give us good milk, to give us good grains, should not be left in this condition 
that they have to run from pillar to pillar to get some uh, support. <clears throat> this unconcerned way of living, that I don't care as long as I am comfortable, I don't care as long as I have everything that I need at home, is not the right way. The issue of food security is an issue of everyone. If we transfer all the land, forest and water resources for profit making, what will happen to the food security of this country? Uh, will we have enough to eat or will we again come to a situation where we will have to depend on other countries for our grains, our food grains? I have experienced it during my childhood. We were all standing in queue for milk from America or food from America. So we should not come back to that situation and uh, the young people need to wake up because your generation need to understand that India is for you, the world is for you. Unless you protect this world, there will be nothing for you. So the land, the water, the environment, uh, the forest, you need to hold on to it. You need to keep it safe. So the forest, the singing, dancing tribals, the, the land, the happy farmers, the, the water sources, the happy fisher folk singing and catching fish. These are all things about which we have learned and we have, we have heard poems and stories about it. Now this should not come to an end. We need to protect these resources, we need to protect these people and we need to protect their happiness and life. When 100,000 people are walking to Delhi, <coughs> This is time for you to wake up and <clears throat> speak to the government and say, no, we don't want this kind of development model where millions of our people are pushed to cities and slums. You need to support these 100,000 people who, who are walking from Gwalior to Delhi. You need to articulate their agenda. You need to be behind them. You need to come as volunteers. You need to raise money to support these people so that they can have one meal a day when they are walking on the road. So there are two important slogans for young people. One, between silence and violence, there is active non-violence. So silence is not good, violence is not good. In between there is active non-violence, so 100,000 people are going to use active non-violence and this is time for you to come and join hands. The second slogan is that if you are not indifferent, the world will be different. The world needs to be, to be different for millions of people who are living on this earth. So if you are indifferent, the world cannot be different. So don't be indifferent. Wake up, act and say, I don't want to be indifferent. I want to see what is happening in this country. I want to intervene. I want to intervene in the industry of marginalized people. And I don't want some people to make profit at the cost of millions. Like Gandhi said, there is enough for everyone's need and not enough for anybody's greed. So when need and greed are face to face, we need to stand with people who are struggling for their need and fight against forces that are trying to fulfill their greed at the cost of destroying the resources and life of people.